Hi, I'm Donna Kalner, and this old-fashioned wringer washing machine is an important water conservation tool in my small business. One of the things that I do to make a living as a fiber artist in rural northern Wisconsin is dye fabric for quilters using fiber reactive commercial dyes. It's a much different process than the plant-based natural dyeing I do, but it produces lovely fabrics for quilts that may be used for several generations. I use low water immersion dyeing processes. It suits my personal aesthetic, my conservation principles, and my circumstances as a rural dyer. With fiber reactive dyes, some dye will not fix to the fabric. It has to be rinsed out and washed to prevent backstaining on other fabrics when a quilt is washed. That can involve a huge volume of water. Now I do all I can to reduce that volume because like most people in rural areas, our wastewater goes into a septic tank. In a healthy septic system, bacteria decomposed the solid waste. Now, flooding a system with a huge volume of water can cause problems there, particularly when the water is highly alkaline, like dye wastewater is. My standard top-loading automatic washing machine has a capacity of about three cubic feet, and it uses about 20 gallons of water per cycle. My ringer washer uses about 18 gallons of water per cycle, but it's easy to wash more than one load in a cycle. Before we get to that though, the first thing I do after my dye has batched is rinse out the soda ash fixer. I generally dye in plastic bags, which I rinse to reuse. I swish the fabric in a bucket of cold water and then put it in a bucket of fresh water to soak instead of just rinsing under the faucet until the water runs clear. In a few hours and again as needed, I change the water in the bucket. I generally soak my fabrics this way, like colors together, for at least 24 hours before washing. When it's time to wash, I fill the tub with hot water. Then I add a professional textile detergent that keeps unfixed dye molecules in suspension so they don't attach where you don't want them. Before I start the agitation on a load, I am going to fill the laundry tub with rinse water. Plug it in. That gets the, the motor going. And now here, I'm going to start the agitation. fabric sorted into like colors. And I start with this way my grandmother washed. Light colors and normally these would be light lights first and then darks. It's in the rinse. I'm going to 
the agitation again. Because the detergent holds the dye molecules in suspension, I can go ahead and wash another load of the fabric in the same wash water. Use the same water for uh, washing two loads of fabric and rinsing two loads of fabric this first time around. You can see that there is some, I, I don't know if you can see in this light, but there is some dye in suspension in the, in the water. So we're going to get a, a clean tub of water and repeat the process, the hot water wash. But first I got to get this stuff out of the... hoses in the in the tub before I throw the lever to drain the tub. And here's again. You can see that there was um, dye coming off in the water. So I've, I've refilled a fresh fresh tub of hot water and a fresh tub of cold water and I'm going to start the agitation. together this time? No. I use in my shop. 
shop and I'm going to wash those in the same water. After draining the tub then I use a little fresh water to rinse it out and wipe out the washer and ready to store it until the next time I use it. And now pull out the agitator and tip the screen up. Turn the screen. Clean out the tub. And dry it and make sure it's ready for the next time.